guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's April. <clears throat> I'm a nurse practitioner, I have been for a year. Um, and I post a lot of content on TikTok that's kind of like where I got my start, but then I transferred um, a lot of my stuff, like my lifestyle stuff over to YouTube because I can't just talk about medicine all the time. <laughs> and I like to talk about my life, etc. So, um, if that's what you're looking for, that's what you're going to find on YouTube. However, today's video is um, technically going to be like my one year anniversary as being an NP. So I graduated with my nurse pra family and nurse practitioner from the University of Tampa in August of 2022. And if you know anything about being a nurse practitioner, you have to sit for boards. <laughs> and so I studied the entire like month of August. I sat for my board, I want to say it was like September 7th or something like that, um, past the ANCC and then it was time for me to get a job. I actually already had a job lined up in GI um, and if you guys have watched my other videos, you know that job did not work out. Um, but that job started on October 10th, so technically, I know it's like October 15th today, yeah, so it's a little over my one year anniversary, but I wanted to make a video just like encompassing what it has been like for me to be a nurse practitioner for a full year and like my um, ups and my downs and like the things that I have learned, mostly the things that I've learned because this year has been so completely like transformative for me, honestly, um, and just everything that I have been through, everything that I've learned. Literally, I'm looking, my chart, my camera battery is blinking. Are you kidding me? Like, why did I charge this for this video? Um, but anyway, we'll get through all of that stuff. I have my notes written down because I have to take a bunch of notes for this. But I wanted to make this kind of like a cozy video. So we're in my office space. I just made myself a little pumpkin spice latte. So sit down, let's chat, let's talk about my year in review. I haven't had a pumpkin spice latte that I've made at home in a while, and that's, that's pretty good. 8 out of 10. Also, I know that I look a little bit of a mess. <laughs> it is Sunday morning, the day that you're watching this video, and I just have been needing to make this video all week, but it's been kind of crazy because I'll tell you guys something at the end of the video that is super exciting. Um, I'm really excited for but I've been working on that. I've been actually doing my real nine to five job and then I'm always doing like my social media TikTok stuff. So I'm a busy gal. Um, so I needed to sit down and make this video. I didn't feel like getting myself all dolled up um, because like this is real life. This is what I look like when I'm at home the majority of the time. So let's just get into it. So the first thing that I wrote down is you cannot and will not know everything. So I have this like crazy belief like when I, like when I actually was still a nurse, that I was gonna go to NP school and they were literally gonna teach me everything that I needed to know because I thought that's what happened. Like even when you went to med school, like I thought that you, they taught you literally everything there. Um, and I was so wrong. Honestly, I didn't go to med school, so I still don't know how that works, but I assume it's the same way. Um, but they, NP school really taught me the basics and they taught me where to get information that I was going to need if I did not know it. So for instance, they taught me guidelines, they taught me all of my medications that I needed to know. Um, and then they, like I said, they taught me where to have my resources. So great resources that I would highly recommend for you if you are in NP school, um, if you're thinking about going to NP school, or if you are a nurse practitioner right now, I'm sure you already know about these resources, but, um, up to date is literally my Bible um, and it's great because a lot of times your employer will pay for up to date. So like my employer pays for my up to date. Um, otherwise I think it's like $59 a month, which I know sounds a little expensive, but for a tool that you would literally use every day at work, like there is not a day that goes by that I do not look something up on up to date. Um, they have guidelines, they have <clears throat> pictures if you're more of like a graphics person where you can go down like, oh, penicillin allergy, yes, okay, go here and then do this, do this, do this. Um, so that's really helpful. I also love Hippocrates. I used to have the Hippocrates app on my phone, but now my charting system actually has Hippocrates, which is great because if you ever don't know 
um, like how long you should treat an antibiotic or how often you should take it, um, or what is the dosing requirements for adults versus pediatrics, because I do work in family medicine, so I see both. You can literally look it up on a properties. It's so incredibly helpful. Um, I also have one book that I will link down below for you guys that I use a couple of days a week. Um, I use it mainly for GYN guidelines because I often forget um, what to do and like what are the requirements for if a pap smear comes back abnormal um, because there are different le levels of cellular changes and then if the HPV comes back positive there's different things that you need to do. Um, so it's whether or not like a watch and wait for six months to a year type of thing or if they need to go for a procedure. Um, and that book is called The Primary Care Pocketbook. <clears throat> I love it. It's, it's a very concise book. Um, and then I also actually use my own notes that I took that I sell on Etsy. Um, I have like a little black book that I originally wrote them on. It's my pharmacology notes. And I happen to have like the AHA blood pressure guidelines in there. I don't really use them anymore because I know them um, off the top of my head. But then I also like to use the ASCVD clinical indicator um, guidelines, which is basically when to start a statin on somebody and what type of statin to start, whether a moderate or a high intensity. Um, so I'll have that link down below as well if you're interested, but it is my notes and a, a few of the reviews on Etsy are like, oh, this is difficult to follow, like there's too many acronyms. It's notes. It's not meant to be. It's not a handbook. Um, it's not like, it's something that you look at quickly and all my acronyms um, are like spelled out and what I use acronyms for, but it's literally my thoughts and guidelines put onto paper. So. Yeah. Um, okay, second one is that you need to always stay up on your research. And this is something that I've always known about the medical field that is like kind of annoying to be completely honest because it's like once you know something a year later, like that entire thing can be debunked and the guidelines can be completely changed. So um, you always have to stay up to date on things. And a great way to stay up to date is to either subscribe to like the American Academy of Nurse Practitioners or if you um, subscribe to some type of nurse practitioner platform because they will send you stuff. I also like to stay up to date on research through podcasts. So I really love the internal medicine um, podcast called Curbsiders Inter Internal Medicine Podcast. Um, it's really great too because they'll have a lot of specialists on and if you know anything about primary care, I always like to say your primary care um, provider, whether they're a physician, nurse practitioner, PA, knows a little bit about a broad spectrum of disease processes, whereas your specialists know a lot about a very narrow spectrum of disease processes. So your primary care is probably not gonna know every little question that you ask them if you have a new diagnosis of RA. That's why we send you off to a rheumatologist because we know about it and we know how they typically treat it and we know the medications that they use to treat for it and we know the medication side effects and all of that type of stuff, but um, we're not like, we're not treating it every day, all day. So it is so important that you stay up to date on guidelines. Like for instance, the asthma guidelines just recently changed and now you have to have, or not you have to, but you should have a lava ICS combo for your patients with mild to moderate intermittent asthma because it will prevent them from having to use their albuterol inhaler. So it's always, it's so important to like find resources that you like and stay up to date on them, which kind of ties in with number one. Number three is probably the thing that I am the most passionate about just in regards to medicine in general. I feel like I get a ton of questions about this like every week um, through like TikTok and Instagram messages and people just saying like how do you like get away from the anxiety and the stress of your work and to be honest I was never good at that when I was a nurse and I don't know what it was about being a nurse but I just could not like turn off my pre-shift anxiety or turn off my thoughts about work. But now as a nurse practitioner, I'm very good at compartmentalizing things. And I don't know if that's just age, um, maturity, um, or just <laughs> coping mechanisms, but you have to find ways to completely disconnect from work because you cannot be thinking about work from the minute you wake up to the minute you go to bed every single day, you will get burnt out. Um, some ways that I do that is I really try to not bring my charting home. Um, if I do bring my charting home at max, I will chart for like 30 to 45 minutes. You guys, my camera died. So I have to think about where my thoughts were, <laughs> like what I was talking about. I was talking about just like taking time away from work to do what you need to do. So 
<clears throat> to like prevent burnout. In the last year, like I can tell you, like my first year of being a nurse, I was burnt out in like the first six months. So I feel really good where I'm at with like being an NP. I feel like I'm doing something right because I don't necessarily feel burnt out. And I've had a really difficult like past month because we've had an NP leave that I like took over their whole schedule. And it's been, I've been double booked, I've been triple booked. I just had like lots and lots and lots of patients. Um, and I still, feel okay inside so um, I think that honestly a lot of that has to do with the fact that I have other outlets like I have social media which is kind of like a hobby for me but also a side job and then I also practice a lot of self-care so that is my other tip um, I know that not everybody's into self-care like stuff like meditating um, but I very much am I do try to meditate every day it doesn't happen every day um but i use the calm app it's so helpful just like a 10 minute deep breathing session really does wonders for my personal mental health and then the thing that i love about working out patient and what i tell myself all the time if i'm ever like oh, i just really don't want to go to work today i'm like i'm gonna be home at five o'clock like i'm gonna be home at five o'clock and i'll get to do whatever i want whereas when i worked in the hospital it was that's what you were doing the whole day is like you were going to work for 12 13 hours and then you were coming home and like then you were going to bed and doing it all over again that's why i love about working outpatient is i just have more of like a, a work-life balance if you will like i can just there's so much more in my day than just going to work like there's the gym there's cooking which i love to do there's spending time with my family, like going on walks with my dogs. There's working on my side businesses like YouTube, um, social, TikTok. There's being outside when the sun is still out. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's better for me. I know it's not like for everybody. Some people like like the 312s type of thing. Um, but for me personally, I prefer a little bit more balanced life. I think that, I think I told you guys this, but we are actually starting four 10 hour shifts that I'm a little bit nervous about at work. I'm really excited to have like some days off during the week um, and not having to like wake up in the morning five days a week, but I'm nervous about like altering my entire routine that I've had for like the last seven months, but it's okay, we'll figure it out. This coming week actually is gonna be my last week of working five days. And then the week afterwards, I'm off on Monday and I will work Tuesday through Friday every other week and Monday through Thursday every other week. So it's kind of weird. It's not my preference. I wish I just worked like Monday through Thursday every week, but that's how the office is doing it right now. So I'm obviously always willing to try something and see if it works, but we will figure it out. Um, I'm gonna have to like adjust my entire workout routine, all that stuff, but it's totally fine. Like it's gonna, it's gonna work out. Anyway, going back to, I was giving you guys life updates, but going back to um, just like finding time away from work, setting boundaries with work, like do not text me on the weekends if I'm not on call. Please do not, like don't answer people's text messages about anything about work, like after five o'clock PM, you know, like stuff like that. I, tr I really try to make boundaries like that. I'm not the best at like answering text messages that I get. I absolutely hate it when people text me about work on the weekends um, after I'm off. I just hate it, like I don't wanna think about work. So I do need to get better myself about setting those boundaries. Um, doesn't happen very often, but that is something that I'm still working on and something that I would urge you guys to work on as well. The last thing that I just kind of wanted to touch on is I've changed job as an NP once. You guys know I previously worked in GI for about six months, but I went through like some bullying in the GI world and just not actually being a nurse practitioner. And I was like, why the heck did I go to school to be a nurse practitioner if I'm not gonna be a nurse practitioner? So I switched to primary care. If you guys missed that video, I have a full like sit down video. It's titled like, let's talk about it. What happened in GI? You can watch that, but you guys know I share my life so much on social media and I feel like I get a ton of questions, especially in the last month about like, why don't you look for other jobs? Like you seem super stressed, like in your videos that you're posting, um, just talking about your work day and all that type of stuff. And my job has been very stressful recently, um, but something that I think we all need to remember is that the grass is not always greener on the other side. Just because you're having a hard time at work or just because things aren't going all 
as planned does not mean that you need to get up and change your job. That every job comes with its issues, every job comes with stresses, and like nothing is going to be perfect, and it will never be perfect. But there are obviously occasions where you do need to quit. So for example, in GI, I was being personally attacked and it was not a good healthy like mental state for me to be in and i knew my worth and so i left in primary care my job right now i am being tested but i don't feel like i need to leave at this point in time um so i'm going to stay put i'm going to work through the difficult stuff because i really do genuinely enjoy my job i love my patients like my patients at this office just mean the world to me and I would hate to just leave them high and dry to somebody else that like, I just am confident in the care that I give them. Just remember that, like water your own grass. So work on your time off and how you are personally like improving yourself and getting better. And yeah, I don't know, I hope that makes sense. That is really my year in review and what I have learned in my year of being an NP. Obviously there's medical things that I have learned that I just can't all get into. I can't get into specific patient cases and stuff, but I've learned so much more than just that. But I just wanted to touch briefly on like the biggest lessons that I have learned. Um, so I hope that helped you guys. But the last thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about is the fact that I am opening my own company. I'm so excited. It's actually already, um, in the works. I kind of announced this to you guys on TikTok like a week ago. So it's me and one of my best friends, Mara. She is also a nurse practitioner. We have gone, we went through NP school together and we always were like, we want to just like do Botox, like have our own Botox spot in the future. Um, but right now we don't want to open like a business front. That just seems like we don't want to open a store that just seems like a lot there's so much competition in like the med spa world so we're like let's do mobile like a mobile service we both work nine to five we know it's really difficult to get into a med spa um and like go and actually see them because we're working every day of the week like yes we could go on a saturday but that's only one day of the week and you need to get all of your weekend stuff done um, so we decided to do a mobile Botox and IV service. It's called the Glow Bar. We've gotten our LLC taken care of, um, a new like PO address. Now we're working on obviously getting like our liability insurance and getting everybody scheduled. We actually already have two parties booked and I have a bunch of people who have reached out to me personally um, for me to come to them and get it. And I'm so excited. It's gonna be so fun and it's gonna work perfectly with me going four days a week at um, my office will have more time to work on this and I don't know it just it's feeling like nothing else ever worked out because I needed to be where I am right now for this to work out because this has always been my dream like I've, I feel like I've manifested that coming along and I'm super excited um, about it and it shouldn't interfere with my primary care work at all it's going to be in Tampa it's like not anything affiliated with what I'm doing in primary care besides the occasional Botox at my primary care office, which is fun um, and has helped me learn, but I'm super excited for this. Um, we are working on it hardcore. We're going like every day at it. So if you guys want to support, make sure that you follow me at the Globar NP on Instagram and TikTok. I haven't posted anything on TikTok yet. We need to <laughs> figure out some content. Um, but when we start doing parties and everything, I'll start posting there. So. Anyway, um, a lot of people supported me on TikTok when I posted about it, so I just wanted to say thank you guys for that. It is really my baby right now. I am putting all of my free time into it because I feel very passionately about it, um, and I'm so excited. So thank you guys so much for just like supporting me all the time, watching my stuff. Um, I really couldn't think of a better community to share this with and to share like my personal NP journey and just my life with in general. You guys are all so supportive. Um, so thank you guys so much and I will see you guys next week. Bye guys. <laughs>